Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Pete Masters. I work at the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Um, and I'm actually presenting on behalf of a colleague today who for family reasons couldn't make it, but Ruben Martin is the person that proposed uh, this uh, talk and did a lot of the work behind it. Um, so yeah, Ruben, if you're out there, I'll try and do a good job. So we're gonna talk about local contributors in OpenStreetMap communities or local OpenStreetMap communities and local knowledge. So Simon Poole, hi Simon, was the catalyst for this back in January. He published a, an OSM diary on a 20% decline in new OSM contributors in 2022. This was obviously very interesting for Heart generally, but Heart and Youth Mappers and Missing Maps were all referenced in some of the discussion around that as initiatives that bring in new mappers. Um, so in the community team at Heart, we decided it would be interesting to look at this in uh, some more detail on a longer timeline, but particularly looking at countries that are within the, the regions where we do the majority of our work and support. So we chose two countries from each region, uh, four, sorry, four countries from each region, uh, a total of 16. Two were countries where we'd done a significant amount of work, investment support, and two is where we hadn't. Um, and the idea of this was actually to provide us with some actionable insights and information. Um, so this isn't the point of this presentation, but I just want to go through this quickly. Um, so over, we looked at a five-year period ending at the end of uh, 2022 where Simon's analysis was. There had been a decline generally in most of the countries that we analyzed in terms of contributor numbers. However, the volume and pace of edits had actually risen in most of those countries. And we didn't find a significant correlation between the number of contributors and the number of contributions. Um, there were also a lot of unexplained, they probably are explainable, but the unexplained in this, in this research, peaks in mapped elements likely to be imports, corporate mapping, that kind of stuff. So HOT has four regional hubs uh, where we do the majority of our work on the ground. And we took these insights to the regional hubs and they were kind of like, yeah, that's interesting. But what we're really interested in is local mapping communities. So not necessarily people mapping in Kenya, but people in Kenya mapping, um, which I'm sure as m most of you know, is much, much harder to understand because an OSM profile doesn't have a where you're from or where you live part to it. You only have your contribution history. So why is this important for HART? Well, for like the kind of humanitarian and development work we do, the data is super important, the right data in the right place at the right time. And that like really generally comes from two aspects of the OSM community. So first of all, the humanitarian kind of mappers who tend to be remote, tend to use the tasking manager, um, the kind of thing you see in disaster response, but then also local mappers in the places where the issue is happening, where the opportunity is, uh, where the work is. So both of these very general groups are important and there's obviously a lot of crossover between these, um, they're not completely distinct. So Ruben and another guy in the team called Caleb tried to work out how to kind of create a methodology for like a proxy methodology for identifying actually local mappers, people who were in the place they were mapping. And the hypothesis they used was there are certain types of data where it's highly probable that you're looking at the thing or you know the thing. Like you can't, you can't perceive it from the sky. This is a kind of illustrative data model created by Rebecca Firth at Hart. Um, and it kind of splits different types of data and different types of mapping into levels. Um, these are non-hierarchical levels. Um, and so what Caleb and Rubin did was isolate the edits that would fit this part of that model. So essentially, they excluded everything that more or less could be remote mapped from, from the data they were using. The data, by the way, came from Geofabric and Awesome. Um, so the idea being that the edits in this section were likely to be people who were there or knew the place 
intimately uh, in some way. There's obvious limitations to this. Um, one, this model isn't complete, completely complete. It doesn't include every tag in OpenStreetMap. Two, like map roulette and street level imagery do enable like a mixed methodology, remote, local type mapping. Um, so this is this is a crude, a crude instrument, admittedly. Um, but like I said, it was the it was a, a proxy they thought could have some value. So essentially, one unit of contribution to local knowledge mapping was one addition or change to OSM within level two or four of that framework. So these are not change sets and they're not edits as we talk about them usually. I'm just going to call them changes because I don't I don't want to be I don't want to confuse be confused with those things which have obvious uh, definitions. So they did the pilot analysis with four countries um, from the 16 that we did the, uh, the original response to Simon's work on, uh, Nepal, Senegal, Kenya, and Mexico. Partly this is one country from each of the hub, uh, the open mapping hub regions, and partly they represented quite different uh, scales in terms of size of the community and the number of local knowledge changes. So this is probably unsurprising, I think, what they found was that across all those four countries, 1% of contributors contributed 50% of the local knowledge changes. 3% contributed 75, and 35% contributed 95. I don't think this is that different to other findings from other community projects, but maybe you disagree. Um, the Devil, I think, for me, well, for, for them, is in the detail. So in Mexico, for example, that 50% of changes was down to five people. So five people in Mexico made 50% of those local knowledge changes, and 28 made 75. In Nepal, that was um, three people and 13. In Kenya, that was eight people and three. And in Senegal, that's 12 people and three. So the absolute numbers are really quite small for the, the vast majority of these local knowledge changes. Again, I don't know if you're going to be, if you're surprised or not. I was quite surprised. Um, it's worth saying that one thing we should have included here, which Benny from Highgate pointed out last night, is these countries are massively different in size and population. So that's not taken into account in this. So what were the insights from this, um, from this analysis? Like, firstly, there are some seriously amazing <laughs> mappers in every one of the countries we looked at, like some people who do a huge amount of mapping. Um, on the flip side of that, like if you see, I don't know, local knowledge as kind of a value going into OpenStreetMap, there's a high dependency on a very small number of people. Um, in some places, the kind of sustainability of uh, local knowledge contributions and perhaps community resilience look quite low. Um, but then on the flip side of that, it wouldn't take a, if you could add two people to those three in Senegal, the, the number of edits, the, 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 the improvement in the map would, 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 be, would be large. So like supporting, those supporting more of those champions, it, you're not talking massive amount of numbers to have a big impact on the n amount of knowledge going in. So this is, like I said, this is pretty crude research. Um, we would love to see, uh, Ruben actually pr uh, proposed this to the science track, um, but got put in the, the normal track. So his, his idea was to kind of advocate to other researchers. So we'd love to see, um, this improved or approved upon or augmented or disproved. <laughs> um, uh, but including methods for better understanding the strength and depth of local OSM communities, people in the place they're mapping. A deeper analysis of the kind of sustainability and dependence per country. Um, that could be spatial, it could be temporal. It also could be... Um, lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the, we looked at the really high performing mappers, but obviously in that kind of, in that curve, there's a lot of people in the long tail still doing a lot of, a lot of work. Like what, what does that look like? Um, 
I actually ran this past two community leaders from OSM Kenya uh, this week, and they said they were, they were quite surprised, they were quite shocked, um, but they said it was really useful, and could they use it? And at the moment, they can't. Ruben's tr putting together a Jupyter notebook to try and make this methodology replicable and to allow people to, to hack it a bit. Um, but they said tools like this would be useful for people who are proactively trying to grow their community and understand what it looks like and what the strengths are and what the depths are. And also, um, this is purely quantitative. Uh, so it doesn't really provide any insight into community dynamics or motivations or incentives or barriers or anything in those places. I don't know if you saw it. Do you see Anne Lee Steele's anthropological exploration of OpenStreetMap at the last state of the map? Yeah, I would like to see an Anne steal in every country. That would be amazing. Um, so yeah, that would be that would also be super interesting. If this does show a low level of local contributor or local knowledge contribution uh, in some OSM communities, is there a case? Are there mechanisms for broader community engagement to support growth in those areas? So at Hot, we've been focusing on peer-to-peer -peer support initiatives like mentorship programs, like uh, organizing sessions where young OSM communities come and ask questions of more mature OSM communities about how they did it, what went wrong, what went right. We try and support collective action and collaboration work, so we try and fund local state of the maps, other interventions in conferences by local OSM communities, partnering with OSM communities in projects initiatives. We provide some granting and some training and we're in, at State of the Map Africa at the end of the month, we're gonna launch the Field Mapping Tasking Manager, which should make organized field mapping much easier and more rigorous. Um, but I'm interested in what else? Like there's obviously tons of other people in this larger community who are supporting uh, local OSM groups. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to hear about the experiences of that. Uh, limitations, a remote local mapper who only does remote mapping is still part of the local contributor community. This doesn't, I'm not trying to exclude people, like those people definitely exist. Map rule at street level imagery, this is only a snapshot in time, it doesn't show any trends, and it doesn't account for country size. Um, big kudos to Caleb and Ruben for doing the work, and the hot community team and the open mapping hub staff for feedback. Thanks Simon for like provo pr provoking this. And thanks to Laura and Walter from OSM Kenya for providing some critical perspectives. And that's the end. Thank you, Pete, if there are questions. Well, thank you for the talk. Um, for example, to get back to Mexico, which is a big, very big country, and they have told me, told us that there are five people for that are responsible for 50% of the local um, knowledge changes. How can they have local knowledge in such a large country when, if they are only five? So, say, sorry, say it again. How can they have local knowledge? Uh, well, how can they have local knowledge in a huge country when there are only five people? I mean, they couldn't have local knowledge in hundreds of cities. No, exactly. That was that was one of the things I was saying. It doesn't include a spatial component. So my assumption is that there's five really, really well-mapped places in Mexico. It's not like they've locally mapped the whole country. There's, in fact, Nepal, it's definitely true because we did some uh, analysis of the data from Nepal and looked at some usernames and where have they mapped. And like one town is amazing, but like every town around it is, yeah, much less amazing. Thanks, Roland. I was thinking maybe um, it's people update, for example, fixing all the opening hours. They would show up as a local mapper in all of Mexico as well. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, they would. I mean, if, if they fix syntax errors, you don't know anything about it, but you do. That should, that should come up. Opening hours is within the model, so if there's a change made to opening hours, it should count as a unit of local knowledge contribution. Is that what you mean? Just my, my point is that they don't have local knowledge. They're just making a technical improvement. Ah, okay, okay. So it's a limitation yeah. to the... Yes. Yeah, okay. Granted. 
Ruben's going to publish a diary with the whole thing and access to the data and access to the notebook. So you please feel free to critique. Yeah. Um, um, I'm wondering if the people that were found using this method, if they've been contacted in any way, like have they been verified? Like, hey, what are you doing? How are you? Are they aware of like maybe there are some certain mappers that are just mapping and aren't even aware that there's like a giant community mm. that could potentially yeah, support yeah, absolutely. Them? Um, no, we. Do, I mean, we have the username, so yeah, yeah we can, yeah. but we have we haven't gone that far yet. Um, I suppose I have to ask a question. Um, no, it's more an obs observation. You didn't actually resolve the implied question at the beginning, is why the edits still continue to increase. And, and the, the point there is that the conversion rate from newbies, people starting up, to larger mappers is very, very, very small. So we're talking about 0.1% depending on how you define a large mapper. So short-term changes in the influx of new mappers has nearly no effect at all on the overall editing activity. And that's to be expected in the end. It's just that something that we don't really think of. We always see these growth numbers, but essentially OSM is supported. The bulk of the edits are by those 50,000 to 100,000 mappers that are really large. And from a pure volume point of view, as you said, there are about probably 90 to 95% of all edits that happen. And just tagging on to the consequences and questions part of the talk, um, one of my old riffs, which people which know, so, sorry, one of my old riffs that I keep on harking on about is that we don't really do enough for the large mappers. Our focus tends to be on getting new, new ones in, but we don't do re anything essentially for existing larger mappers. They are essentially left to fend for themselves. I think, I think, because Benny asked me yesterday, why is it called a dilemma? Why is the thing called a dilemma? I was like, oh, sh I, I never asked Ruben that. <laughs> like, but I think, um, that's part, partly you've put your finger on it. Like we, you know that hot, we try to do a lot to bring in new mappers, uh, but largely through the tasking manager historically, now there's like much more of a local emphasis. Like maybe the strategy needs to be much more balanced in terms of supporting these people um, rather than just bringing in numbers. Um, so I think that's absolutely where that dilemma question comes from. Like where should we put the resource and the effort and they're like, Research, I guess. Yeah. Hi. Um, my question might end up like not to you directly, but more to the audience. If you ever try to organize the local community meetup, uh, did you find any better way than just collect top 20 contributors around you? put them in a spreadsheet and try to contact them because it's such a huge pain in the socks. You, like via our like OSM org website, just to communicate with people. So something like a group or, I know there is a proposal for like, for groups inside the OSM org, but meh, it's like 10 years old, so. Any ideas on that thing? <laughs> that was a question for you, not for me. Uh, OK, uh, I think we're almost out of time, but uh, I have this one thing to, th uh, thing to think about. Uh, I think uh, one of the central slides for your talk was that countries have like one to three active mappers. Uh, so mappers adding this type of data. Yeah, yeah. and uh, HOT focuses on like helping, supporting other mappers to also be active. Mm. Uh, I come from like Eastern Europe. In Estonia, we have also three mappers responsible for everything. Mm. In Lithuania, it's just one mapper mm. for the entire country. And I'm thinking maybe we can come to this from different angle. How do we stop these people 
from mapping everything. <laughs> <laughs> and should be. <laughs> because it's either or. Like in Lithuania, I know that one mapper responsible for everything. It makes participation unbearable for everybody else. You mean in kind of a gatekeeper-y type way? Or? Kind of that. It all comes to that. When you're one of three people for entire country, you start becoming a gatekeeper in several years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. Like, I've only spoken to the people from OSM Kenya. That didn't seem to be like a problem for them. I think there's plenty of mapping to do. And there doesn't seem to be a territorial nature for the... Because one of them is in the top, like, whatever... Um, in the top 75% uh, contributors. Um, yeah, but it's an interesting point. So I just wanted to point out that if you go to Pascal Nice OSM stats site, there is a per country active mapper list, which will give you the, the OSM accounts of the most active mappers. And uh, naturally, there are countries which have larger communities which just don't have just two or three large mappers. In the world developed ones, they can be a couple of dozens. Mm -hmm. So it's naturally a function of these countries yeah. not having long history in OSM yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. We, we actually tried to use that, um, but because like in Senegal, there's not that many people, no one qualified for that. So it, we tried to do something that was relative to the size of the community and the number of contributions. Yeah. Are we done? Thank you very much. Thank you.